you're welcome to another episode of the now show the network of overcomers and winners and you know what we try to do on this show is bring the stories of people who have overcome you know they've had a challenge and they've overcome but my guest today she's overcome various challenges that's why today's episode is called kept by grace because it could only have been by grace my guest today my sister my friend dr zion echo Dari. dr z welcome to the now show thank you thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for doing this with us because um people have stories we all have stories we all have challenges we've been through <laughs> and not everyone you know is willing to talk about it what you're talking about it not only releases you it inspires other people and that is the whole basis of this and the fact that you have chosen to share your story with us means that you have chosen to help somebody out there who may be struggling with one thing or the other it's just listening to you they just be what they have been waiting for to, to see you know i look at you and i say to myself that you are a daughter of grace I mean, you've been through so much, like I said, and you have overcome each and every step. Your story, you know, who better to talk about your story than you yourself? True. Just say, please share with us your story. Share with my viewers your story. Hello. Okay. Okay. Hello. My name is Zaina Kundare. I started off, as most people do, wanting to have a normal life, you know, go to uni, get a job, get married. And I think everything, you know, during school, during uni, everything was going very well. In fact, I think I was probably a year ahead of most of my, my, my peers. So everything was going perfectly. Then I got married um, and I had a baby. I had a little bit of a wait. Um, Two, three years where i was a bit concerned but then i eventually i got pregnant and had a baby and everything was fine until the baby was um five weeks old then he fell ill and we couldn't understand i mean why is a five week old baby running a fever mm. but um you know it was it was just one of those things we took him to hospital they checked him couldn't understand why the fever was so high mm. eventually they said they couldn't find anything so they discharged us it was my dad's 70th birthday and I was mm. determined mm. to attend the party. I'm a daddy's girl. Mm. Unashamed <laughs> daddy's girl. Unashamedly. Yes, you know? unashamedly mm. I am a daddy's girl. So I had to be at his party. Yes. So even though there was a bit of disquiet that, hmm, I'm not sure. I mean, you know, hey, when a five-week-old starts running a high fever and they mm. find no reason, mm. you should know there's, you know there's something Actually, wrong. Actually, be a medical doctor yourself. Exactly. Mm. But you, I had to go for daddy's birthday. Yes. So, Went back to Nigeria eventually, arrived on a Tuesday. Um, by Wednesday, 12 noon, we were back in hospital. Mm. And that birthday party that I wanted to attend yes. on the Saturday, I actually literally left my baby in the hospital, went to the service. Wow. The whole party that I had spent so much effort and time mm. arranging, mm. I couldn't even attend the party. I think I went in there, looked in just to make sure they had Everything set it up the way I wanted. Right. Yes. And I had to go back to the hospital. And that was Daddy's 70th birthday. Wow. Party for me. As far as you were concerned. A week later, we were, in air, we were on an air ambulance back to the UK because wow. it was very clear that something was seriously wrong. And one of the doctors figured out maybe it was an immune system disorder. So we came back to England. Mm -hmm. And I really believed then, I believed that if I can just get him into Greater One Street, you mm -hmm. know, everything will be if you're fine. right. Everything. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I was, you know, I, I was so focused. We got into Greater One Street. They diagnosed what was wrong with him, you know, within 24 hours. And I was like, right, we're home and dry. Mm -hmm. Then they came and they told me the story. They said, well, the only thing is there's no treatment. Wow. They said, um, at that point in time, they said that was the 17th time they were going to diagnose that condition. So I was like, what kind of condition? Anyway. Hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. That's what wow, it's called. That's what it's called. And they said that was the seventeenth time. And they said, you know, it's probably more common than that. Okay. It's just that they don't catch they it. Don't, you know, mm -hmm. the babies die before that. Yes. So what causes it? They said, oh, it's inherited from both parents. Like 
a bit like sickle cell disease. Okay. One in four chance. But yeah. it's so rare that, you know, in fact, they kept asking, are you sure you're not related to your husband? Because it's usually when people are related, wow. they find it a lot in, you know, races in, in, in cultures where okay. they, they actually intermarry and they marry first cousins. So I said, as far as I'm concerned, nothing like that. Anyway, long story short, he died. When mm -hmm. he died, my world kind of just, everything flatlined for a while. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. The reason was I believed so much in medicine. Hmm. I believed so much that if this, if, if I could get him, as I said, if I could yes. get him to Greater Wall Street, hmm. he would be hmm. fine. And hmm. then medicine failed. They told me they couldn't do anything. Hmm. They, it wasn't even well enough for them to even treat him. It was that bad. Wow. So I just kind of, you know, I, I, I just kind of, I, I didn't unravel. I think I just, I just lost my bearings for a bit. Hmm. But in the middle of all of this, a dear yes. friend of mine, sent me to go to um, CLC bookshop okay. to buy her some books. Okay. You know, I've given my life to Christ about 20 times. You mm. know, so many friends will invite me, I'll go to church, give my life, go back to my merry ways, go mm. back, give my life. Mm. So I had done this, you know, a number of times. Merry go round. Merry go round. Mm. And mm. then this friend of mine sent me to buy her some books at CLC. I've never been in a Christian bookshop. It was wow. like, and I love reading. Yeah. So I, I bought her her books and yes. then I bought maybe like 20 books for myself. Wow. And then went back the next day and bought a few more. Wow. And then ended up with this pile of books. And by the time I finished with those books, mm -hmm. I dedicated my life to Christ. And I knew that I this had, time was this time was the mm -hmm. real thing. Mm -hmm. And it was so funny because you know, it's like I've dedicated my life to Christ maybe on a Thursday. And then on Saturday, yes. my dad's best friend's daughter. Out of the blues. I don't think I'd spoken to her in five, six, seven years. Yes. She just called me out of the blues. She said, will you come to my church? I said, yes. Hmm. She was like, you come to my church? I said, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where is it? Wow. She said, you know, it's a bonnet. It's not Methodist church. I'm like, uh, I said, just tell me where it is. So she told me. And Sunday morning, I sat down with A to Z in those days. I, yes, yes. I drove to this church. I went to the church. And they did an altar call. And I went to the altar and I knelt mm. down and I prayed. Mm. Everybody gave their life. Mm. I went up to give my life. Everybody prayed. But I was caught up in this prayer. Mm. Something just dawned on me that the whole place was quiet. Mm. When I opened my eyes, everybody was looking at me. <laughs> you were the only one there. <laughs> everybody had gone back to their seat. Yes. I think even the yes. pastor didn't know what to do. What to do. About this person who was deep. In prayer, I was. But you know, that was your own experience yeah. Yeah. with God at that moment. Absolutely. Mm. Now I know. Mm. Then I was mm. just, oh my goodness, what yes. have I done? Oh, yes. I've embarrassed this girl. Mm. I was like, mm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She's like, no, no, it's okay, mm -hmm. it's okay. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's where the journey began. Yes. Um, and yes, I went back. I, 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 I started practicing. Yes. Christianity. Mm -hmm. I started mm -hmm. this my Christian walk. Um, it was very sweet. Mm. I had some encounters with God that up to now they give me shivers. Like, you know, like I can imagine. I, yeah, yes. amazing, yes. amazing things. I remember one night I was so ill. This is one of the ones that stands out for me. I was so ill. I went to bed. Even my husband was a bit worried. worried. That, Are you sure you're going to be okay? I mm. said, I'll be fine. You know, I don't want to go to hospital. You know, and I went to bed. I slept. And when I slept, I dreamt that this person came to me. In white, like Jesus, and he said, It's okay, and he puts his hand on my throat. Mm. Next mm. morning, I was perfectly okay. Wow, even wow. everybody was shocked. Are you sure you're? I said, I'm like, Yeah, I'm going to work, I'm mm -hmm. fine. You know, mm -hmm. it was that good. So, I had a series of encounters like that. Yes. Anyway, long story short, come back to um, I think again that finding faith helped me to cope with the loss of my of son. son. Mm. So, um, fast forward a few years later. It took me another three years before I conceived mm. again. Mm. Um, I had a daughter this time. Yes. And then they told me, they said, you know, in, interestingly, the, the doctor that delivered her, yes, you know, made me see a pediatrician. And the pediatrician told me then, he was the head of the department then at Hammersmith Hospital. Okay. And he told me, he said, um, you know, if you find that you are ill, if you mm -hmm. have any concerns about your daughter in any way, mm -hmm. call me. He said, don't go mm -hmm. through the system because it might be too late. Okay. Just call me and let me fast forward you. Mm -hmm. I said, fine, I'll do that. 
So then there was, you know, everybody was come home, come home. I was like, no, I'll just wait. Come home, I'll just wait a bit. My husband there was like, wait, 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 wait. Yes. In fact, he was having his own challenges, you know, he was in detention for all kinds of things. So wow. I, yeah, he was in detention. In fact, I found out the day he was born. Yes. I just thought, um, you know, I remember my, my brother, whose wife was pregnant, also said, come and stay with me. Don't yes. be alone in your house. And mm -hmm. that made sense. That was a reasonable yes. thing. So I went to stay with his wife. Um, she had a baby. Her baby is virtually a month older than mine. Than your daughter. So I went and kept her company there. And from there, I went into labor. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, I remember the day after the baby was born, I said, okay, somebody needs to tell me now because I think maybe this man is dead or something. Because she hadn't seen because him. Because I haven't heard or seen him. Wow. And I've been sitting here, his staff in his office, you know, all kinds of people are calling me, yeah. but not a word from him. Mm -hmm. Then they told me, oh, he's in detention. I got detention. I'm going and everybody was calm down. Make sure wow. okay. Long story short, when the baby was two months, I I think yes, we gave her immunization. Yes. And she started running a fever. So I went to our GP and I said, My baby's ill, my baby's running a fever. Mm. And she was like, Oh no, don't be ridiculous. She's fine. Mm. You know, everybody runs a fever. I said, No, this is a bit more what I'm expecting. Mm -hmm. She said, Shall I tell you something? Lightning never strikes in the same place twice. Wow. And I went, okay. Mm. So I went home, I drove back home, I picked up the phone, I called the professor. I said, my GP has just told me lightning doesn't strike, strike in the same, same place twice, twice, but I am not happy. Mm. So I am coming. And he said, just put her in the car and drive to the hospital. By the time we got to the hospital, yes. the fever was raging. In fact, would, right, you, would you call it motherly intuition at that time? I think or so. it was just divine? Because, I mean... For you to was know not God. or feel that something certainly is wrong here, that's why the fact that they were saying that, you know, mm. Mm. because she was fine, and you know, it was like in the time that we took to drive from Fiji to Hammersmith, yes. it's like the fever just, you know, like so, rock, you know, mm. really spiked. And he took one look at her, and as he was trying to examine her, she started having a febrile convulsion. Wow! So he was like, wow, 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 okay, this is bad. So he called Great Ormond Street. They said, look. Have a bed for her tomorrow morning. Let her come in the morning. Then he said, okay, take her home and bring her in the morning. I looked at him. I said, take the child, have a couple of shot No way. I'm staying right here. Mm. So he said, no problem. Mm. We'll put you in a bed. And I, I, and I remember that day, you know. I remember so clearly. Next morning, we got in an ambulance and we were driving to Greater Mount Street. Yes. And all I was saying was, Lord, I left one child behind. You know, I cannot leave another one behind. Mm. Lord, mm. whatever it takes, mm. you know, whatever you want from me, I will do. But please, please, wow. please, I cannot wow. leave another child. I can't wow. walk out of this building empty handed wow. again. You know, wow. it was so bad that you, even the doctor that treated us the first time, yes. you know, when he when, when he came, because obviously it's, 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 it's the same department, yes. he looked at me and I think he saw in my eyes that I don't want you to treat me. Mm. Because it's like, I don't want you to touch my yes. child because I don't want, I can't, I can't. Because that I don't level want, of yeah. fear was there, the you know, or fear was distrust there. as well. Yeah. Mm. But you know, as time went on, one kind of peace just settled on me. In fact, mm. people say in, you know, people who were, came to visit me, they yes. used to say that I was so calm. You know, I didn't know it then, and mm -hmm. I just knew that. I, I and I think then that it was the grace of God. I, now yes. I had someone to I could talk to. I was I could talk to God. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to mm -hmm. figure anything mm -hmm. out on my own. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, it's me and you. That it's grace, like that. that grace, that's there counting for yes. you. Mm -hmm. This is me mm -hmm. and you. This yes. is me and you, Lord. There is nothing left. So mm -hmm. that that went on. We stayed there. Then they came. They told me. You know, they were going to do this treatment. They said they were going to try various treatment. You know, they, they had the treatment. Yes. Chemotherapy. And then they told me, they said, after three three courses, it's going to start working. Wow. So we need to have, um, we need to have a bone marrow transplant. And Chemo for your baby. Yeah. Six, wow. six. By then she was, yeah, she was three months old then. So they said, well, we will give her came up every three weeks and after that we will um we will we will have to you know we'll have to find a bone marrow donor to perform a transplant. Yes. So we started looking for a donor. Because mm. you know black people don't donate blood well, but we couldn't find a donor. And then I remember one day we went to you know we, we did the two cycles. In fact we did she had the first lot of chemo, she had the second lot before the third lot we had to go back to the hospital because the fever mm. was going up again. And then they told me, they said, can you see it's not working? 
it stopped working now. Wow. But all the time, there were a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer was going on. In the middle of all of this, I remember at some point, my visa ran out. I had to run to Nigeria hmm. on a flight and come yes. back the same day just to get just make sure my passport was stamped, hmm. you know. So I came back, you know, and then I, I went one night, I went to Festival of Life. And at Festival of Life, the general of the city said, it's one of the first times I would ever hear it. Mm. He said, you know, it's Christmas. You know, he said, ask the Lord for a present. For a Christmas present. He said, and mm. if there is, if it is anything any human being can do, then it's not, then you've you wasted mm. you know, mm. this opportunity. Mm. You need to ask for something only So God big, that is only God. Mm. And I left my baby with my sister. This is probably the first or the second festival of life that we would ever have mm. so i went I, I i obviously i prayed that was on friday night of night yes. saturday on monday morning i got a phone call from great on street they said we'd like to see you on tuesday can you come in i said yeah of course so i went in on tuesday on tuesday they, there was a whole we had about 10 of them all these professors mm. and they said um yeah something very interesting happened they said on saturday no it's saturday I prayed on Friday. Mm. Then on Saturday, he said, you know, we have a network where we email ourselves, you know, we're all specialists. We all rub minds and things to do. Mm. And we all decided we don't know what to do with this your daughter. But on Saturday, one of our colleagues from Spain sent an email and said, why don't we use mom's bone marrow? So I said, is that possible? They said, well, we've never done it before, but we're going to wow. give it our best shot. Awesome. I said, really? He said, yes. I said, okay, how's it going to work? So he told me, so we're going to have to blah 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 stem cells i mean yeah go for it he said no go and think about it i said no 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 no. you just go for it that's you and your daughter so yeah. they were going to be they're going to take my bone marrow and put it into her so i said go for it so he was like no but don't you want to think about it i said there's nothing to think about look at that Absolutely. motherly is because for... you know people don't understand the way mothers are with their children i mean it, it just didn't call for a reflection at all or a second thought do you know what my it wasn't mm. even mother it mm. was like i went to pray to god on friday yes someone came with a suggestion on so, saturday on saturday a solution Imagine. on saturday there's yes. nothing to think about yes this yes. is just god mm. and honestly it was the beginning of an amazing experience you know mm. in in great of if i they wrote a whole article about it you know various papers it was in the papers it was yes. in the sunday times it was in everything wow because wow and i remember the 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 the, 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 the students then mm -hmm. the doctors used to say what you're actually what what seeing is something remarkable that you are seeing that you know they were saying that in all the years i've been doing transplants i've never seen a transplant without one single complication every yeah, single day we say on this day we would like to see this Tomorrow we're hoping to see this, and it just went. And it was, everything just went. As I said, the perfect transplant. She became known as the perfect, the poster baby for the perfect transplant. She was wow. very cute, you know. Wow! <laughs> wow! Wow! So everybody, you know, that part of the hospital, yes. all knew, and they would all come and look, and you know, we just went through it. It was, it was a surreal experience. Mm. But to the glory of God, I mean, hey, she's going to be 25. Yes, I think I was going to say, what <laughs> even at her age now, she's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so we we, we we did that it took us a, a long time you know because i guess i was very cautious too mm -hmm. because regardless of the fact that i knew god was in control i felt yes. that i needed to do everything i needed to do so they wanted as much as possible they wanted me to shield her that don't let her don't challenge her immune system more than mm. it can take mm. you know mm. let just slowly introduce and make sure you keep her away from measles and chicken pox and those kind of things okay. until we can okay. immunize her because yes. we just need to know that everything is sitting well mm -hmm. so obviously work was out of the window everything was out of there mm. and mm. then slowly slowly she's like getting better she would go into i put her in nursery yes um she would go to nursery you know she would go in for three days then somebody would cough and then Pull her out again. Wow. Wow. The person coughing wow. will cough for two days wow. and stop. Four yes. days later, before she would stop. So there was a lot of that to in and fro, mm. you know, mm. where she would go in and come out. But they kept doing all the tests and telling me, reassuring me, don't worry, everything is everything fine. Is fine. Mm. Everything is so fine. She, everything is working exactly as we want it to. Um, so I thought, okay, back to medicine. You know, mm. so I got an au pair, started studying. By this time, as 
things happen. Yes. Um, dad was released, I was, as things happen, I think, or, well, I wouldn't say I think, I know, because we're very good friends. Yes. At that point, I think he was just overwhelmed with all this, that I can't deal with all this hospital and illness. Mm -hmm. I just can't deal with, you know. Mm -hmm. So he wandered off. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, okay, this was now down to me. So this was just now you. You knew that you had been left alone here with this issue. Wow. So my sister, you know, I started living with my sister. Um, it, of course, in the middle of all this, while he was, um, you know, in detention. Yes. Obviously, you know, you have a house, you're paying a mortgage. Yes. He's the one earning. I can't work. I haven't worked for a couple of years mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. He's the one earning and he's in detention and not able to earn. Yes. After all, I couldn't keep up with the payment. So we had to let go of the home. I had to sell it, pay everything <sighs> off. And I moved in with my sister. Dr. C, you see why I said, you know, they, we need to understand how much, you know, sometimes the way it rains, it pours. Yeah. Here you were, the loss of the first child. You went on to have another child. You had to deal with so many issues with her. Mm -hmm. God brought the miracle. Mm -hmm. Then your husband's detention. Mm -hmm. By the time he was now released, it now, rather than the family coming together again, he wanders off. He walks away. Yeah. The end of your marriage. Yeah. How much can somebody take? One person. And there you are, you took it all. You're not done yet. You're going on. Mm -hmm. You lost your home. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. I lost my home. I went to stay with my sister. And I went to live with her. Um, and my sister and I were very close. Mm -hmm. My sister, my sister was my best friend. My sister was, I mean, she was three years older than me. Okay. But, um, and, you know, we had many years of, of, Go away, go and fight, stop following me around. Because I was, I just used to follow, I was like a little puppy. I yes. used to follow her all over the place, you know. Um, and we were so close. I used to say that my sister, the one person who knew every single thing about me in this world was my sister. Mm. I, I trusted my sister so much that I could say it with my hand on my heart. Mm. That if my sister made a decision or told someone to do something mm -hmm. that ended up being bad for me. Yes. I could swear with my life that when she did it, she thought it was the right thing for you. Yeah. She mm. was she was that kind of person. Yes. She 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 just mothered all of us and she just she took her role mm. very I didn't realize it then how okay. seriously it was. Mm. How she just she had this sense of responsibility mm -hmm. for all of us. Mm -hmm. But you know, we were particularly close. Yes. Um, and and you know, she was the one who would I think I was a bit spoiled. Okay. So she was the one who would say, My friend. Mm. Oh, what's wrong mm. with you, you know? Mm. So even through all these challenges, yes. she was there she was steering there. the whole thing mm. to and just saying, mm. you know what, you know what, yes. there's more to life than this, that so you, don't, you can't even allow this. Mm. She wasn't mm. having it. You yes. Know? And then one day, she goes to work, a little... So, so that's somebody that you could consider was your rock. Yeah, she all was through my your rock. challenges. Oh, yes. she was my all rock. through your various challenges. Absolutely, mm. Absolutely. she was my rock. Mm. And then one morning I woke up. We we're going to church in the morning. She was, I was the head usher in the church. Mm -hmm. then. She was the head of um, discipleship class. Okay. So they used to all the like what they'd call the academy now. Yes. So they used to run all these baptism, pre baptism, discipleship classes before the service started. So obviously we go to work, we both go to church very, very early. early. Mm. So I got up. Because you were living with her now, I haven't lost your home. Absolutely. Mm. So I was, um, I took, got up, took my shower, noticed the light in her room was on, I said, where's her light on? And I thought, let me hurry up because she's going to come and fight me mm. now that I didn't get up in time. Oh, time. Took my shower, went back to my room, put on my dressing gown and my underwear and then went into her room. Took that, that. Maybe she drifted off to sleep. Okay. And the door was shut. I opened the door, came. She was sitting there, just sitting on the end of her bed, bent over like that. And I, I said something to her, she didn't answer. And then, you know, I tapped her and said, ah, come here, wakey, wakey, nothing. But when I tapped her back, it just sort of went, oh, thud. And I thought, wait a minute. 
You know, when you tap someone's back, because of the air in your lungs, yes. it sounds like a drum. So it's okay. like, dang, dang. but when it, there's no air in the lungs, it's just thump. Mm. So I thought, what the? I put my hand to her neck, she was stone cold. Wow. wow. I can't even tell you that I check her pulse. I can't tell you. All I know is I ran outside in the flat and I started screaming in Bami when you were there. Oh. I lost all sense of decorum. I was totally, completely and utterly hysterical. I can imagine.